So as you can see, we have now here the schools layer in our Q Q QGIS project. And um, this comes directly out, out of PostGIS. As you can see here, the layer source is quite disturbing. And um, yeah, so we have here the, um, the data inside and we would like to use PostGIS functions to alter and to play around with the data and to filter the data. We don't want to use GDAL or QGIS functions as this might be a little bit lame and PostGIS is much, much faster in transformation and intersection and buffering and stuff like that. But how can it do that? So first of all, you need the database manager. So open up the database manager and you can see here now the tutorial section and we have here the schools layer with um, random number of kids and random number of classes per school. And well, we would like to use SQL on that data field. So first of all, prior to this, we would like to have a look at the table itself. The geometry table or the geometry column here only states multipoint. That is not a string. That is the column holding the whole geometry of the points. And due to the fact that we need this column, we will work with it. So open up the SQL editor or the SQL window and well, let's work with the select. The select is quite simple. We will select everything from schools. Always ends with a semicolon and we would like to execute it by pressing F5. Oh, that does work. So we will press here F5 for itself. So now you see here the preview and this is exactly what we are searching for. Now, you can also change that. So maybe you're not interested in everything, you're just interested in, this, in the number of kids and all in the geometry. Okay, let's go with that. So, kids and geometry. Now, now I don't like the geometry to be, I don't know, in that binary format, so you can easily change that with using the built-in functions. The built-in functions are like st as text. So please fill that column with a proper presentation of the of the uh, oh no as text from what? Of course from the geometry. So execute that and so you can see here a multipoint with this coordinates. So longitude, latitude great easy as fuck so as text so but what about if you are not interested in i don't know degrees but maybe web mercato coordinates of course we can do that let's skip that with the sts text but let's move on no we can we can use this but we would like to alter the geometry itself and therefore there you have the function st transform which works on the geometry, but needs a target SRS ID. So this might be 3857. Rock and roll, execute that. No, it does not work because we are missing our brace here. Execute that. So now you can see you have the multi points still valid here or still used, but the coordinates changed. Well, STX text is fine. Of course, we are living in the 21st century, so as GeoJSON might be a better weapon of choice. Execute that, and so you are here with a nice and proper GeoJSON. But what about buffering? Of course, you can do that. ST buffer. So we will use the buffer function on the geo on the transform geometry. So we have the points in, in degrees. We will change the degrees to 3857 coordinates, which are represented in meters. And we will add a buffer on 1000 meters to this. Once again, once again, we will store that as GeoJSON. Great. To do that, we'll execute that. Now you have here the GeoJSON. Let's find out how the GeoJSON looks like. Okay, so we will use this and we will open up uh, Chrome for um, searching for the GeoJSON IO, which is a nice tool to uh, have a look on your on your GeoJSONs, and we will yeah 
just delete this here because we don't need that and Well, let's find out whether we have missed something. Most likely, so let's find out whether we can see that here already. No. Oh, I forgot. GeoJSON IO don't like 3857 coordinates, it likes degrees and latitudes. So, what we will do here is we will retransform that into coordinates GeoJSON IO likes. Once again, 3857 and execute this. Whoop. What's happening here? ST transform, ST buffer, ST transform, 3857. No, we would like to use it for 326. Does not work. Do we have enough? Nope, still one bracket missing. Execute that, copy that, back to GeoJSON.io. Delete the first entries here as we don't need them. And there we have it. So a very nice, very nice uh, circle here in the center of Germany with those coordinates. But yeah, of course you can also add some nice clauses here. So where is kids less than 250? Well, let's say 500. At the moment we have 1001 rows, execute that. And now we only have 22, uh, 226 rows, which only contains the number or the schools with kids less, or with the number of kids less than 500. But Still, we don't have that in GIS, in QGIS. So we would like to load that as a new layer. Um, no, oh, we need to have some IDs as well. So add the IDs here, execute this. Now we have the IDs. We will use the columns with unique values from the IDs here. And the geometry column is, of course, as GeoJSON. Layer and prefix is buffer. And load them now. So let's. Oh, that doesn't. Uh, it does not look good. So what we will do is we will skip this as GeoJSON. We will execute that once more and set the. Now we are ready to go here. So this is the buffer around schools. And the buffer is now having a circle of three uh, of one kilometer or a buffer distance of one kilometer. And yeah, that's a way we can create layers with views inside QGIS. Thank you very much for watching.